Now this uh, went wrong yesterday. The sky cauliflowered and it was getting a bit murky down here so I, I'm going to paint over this in acrylic. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll spray the paper and I'll put in a bit of a background of a sort of a more modern scene. Uh, we're a big bit outrageous so let's uh, the green. Can't be sentimental about about these things. I'm using a, a, a green, a light or bright green. Um, get a better shape. Like that, do that, that would do no, no. Just put in some some nice some a bit of a sorry on, on some of this. It does make lovely greens, but it's one of those colours that it's very very difficult to to use well. So I'll, uh, what do I need, some yellow, so let's got some cadmium medium hue, so let's just blob out some there, and that should be okay. Um, I'll go put in some, some black and some of that yellow, and we can have some nice, well we'll darken that. Just some, some luscious luscious um, trees down here. I love black, I think. Yes, it does punch holes in, in, your, in your landscape, but my word. It packs a punch. Oh well. A bit of red in with our green. <coughs> and red and black, lovely colour, lovely mix. Now we can just put little bits of. Trees, where you fancy, come down here. Don't pay too much attention to to colours and perspective. We're suspending all that to, to abstract this landscape, to to paint things that are objects in the landscape, but not necessarily in the right order. Just have some some fun with them. I'll have to get some more of these uh, inch brushes. They're, they're, they're varnish brushes and I got them from a, a local art, well an art shop a while away in Sutton, the borough of Sutton, the Sutton, Sutton Town Centre in South London, Surrey. Now I want some nice bright colours so I'll make some bit of Bit of bit of orange in with my yellows. Lovely, lovely. I haven't even thought about the sky. I just want to get some of this in. Catching a bit of light.
No, that's promising. Okay, mm. put some sky in a minute when I get round to it. I'll put my other glove on, I want to keep my fingers dry. It's great fun doing abstracts or painting not realism but what you feel about something, areas that you like, effects that you like, you can exaggerate them, change the colours of them, to, 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 all in all to make an interesting statement, something that's pleasing on the eye, it's challenging, let the viewer fill in the gaps. And I, I learned something years ago, and I think I've mentioned it before, it was oh, 20 years ago when I did my first first abstract. I sat down with acrylic paint and a piece of hardboard and I just whacked away at it and I had some some um, enamels, some silver and gold enamels. And I drizzled that over as well and, and I thought, well it looks alright, it took me 20 minutes and I put it in a frame, a painted plain frame that I'd painted black. And we had a, an exhibition with uh, my uh, the art group that I belonged to for many years, Carl Shorten and Wallington Art Group, I'll give them a plug, from South London, Surrey. I say Surrey, South London, we, we, we're the class of Surrey, but we're really part of the crater of London. And uh, i just click that. And I, I took, with my pal and I, we were on the desk taking any money from the concert goers, or well, the play goes at uh, Fairfield Halls in Croydon. And I took it along as an extra and I just propped it up against one of this display display boards. And I went off and talked to somebody as I usually do, because I like a yak. And um, my pal came running after me after about 10 minutes. He said, here Dave, you've just sold a picture. There's 150 pounds I put on this, it's 20 years ago. I said, I said, well, which one? He said, the abstract. I said, you're joking. Anyway, they paid and took the painting. Now, who knows what they're thinking about what I was thinking when I did it. But, uh, but there it was. Sold. And years later, we did some exhibitions at... Uh, Cotton's Atrium at Hayes Gallery, near Hayes Galleria. It's on the Thames where the HMS Belfast is moored. And all our unsold paintings went into one of two galleries in um, Hayes Galleria. And I started to feed through some larger abstracts that didn't take very long, on hardboard. And I, had them, I framed them, I made the frames myself. And uh, they were selling, they were selling, I was getting about £350 a picture. They were, so they were selling for at least £700 back then. And it was uh, quite a... I learned then that there's no accounting for taste, what other people like. They don't see your work as you do. I mean, I know we're very critical of, of our work, we don't think it's very good. Let's get that green in there. I want to put some nice some blues in, in this. That's a cerulean. It does make rich, rich greens. Now let's just come down there with a bit of. Bit of cold, cold green. See that's cerulean. It's a bit of bit of green mixed in with it, but but this gives a gives a cool a cool note, or well, as Alan I would say, a cool cast. Oh. 
So that's more the blue, let's just drag that over on the shadow size of down in the uh, valley here. Now I think I'll just sort of label that a bit too much there, so let's just I seem to be sweeping up, so I'll just go back and modify some of that. Oh, it's raining heavily now. Been promised it. Haven't had much rain here lately. The weather's been really good on the cool side for, for March, but or late March now. So let's uh, concentrate on the sky. So let's have a red. Just a spray. Very handy. Look, it just makes the the paint colour very, very easily. Thicken up this sky now. So I want to make this. Well, yeah, I do. I was going to say now. Just put a bit of cloud in here. No modelling really, just just lay the paint in. Not making a portrait of the cloud. We're just creating lights and darks and shades. Put the light on this. But avoid just pure white. Give it a bit of a tint. Right, okay. Now we can go back with some of the Movi colours in. Keep it all soft. The, um, the blues um, or the, on the ready side that I'm getting with the cadmium cadmium red and, and the ultramarine they are my staple sort of colours I'll go, go back on that when that's dry, that's, it's just picking up the paint from underneath. So we'll concentrate on the foreground here I think. So nice bright green. I love looking at uh, Jackie Gardner's fabulous abstracts. They are so uh, effortlessly produced, but I bet they're not. Um, they, they just look like it. But they're so, so luscious. A nice rolling landscape of, of moorland. I think we can afford to put in some some brighter colours in the in the uh, in the trees on, on 
here and there. We're usually using orange, red, a bit of yellow. It's not working, is it? Change the green. No, I think I like the black. So let's get the black and the red going here again. Some red. And it's not got pretty red with there, isn't it? Any, well, there, well, there's already red. Of course, it won't show as well. It won't show, but right, let's just Let's get some darker greens in there, then we can put some, when it dries we can put some red over it. Some dark greens, so black, yellow. just a bit muddy at the moment but it's supposed to be a bit of a cloud shadow but, but I can highlight over that with my orangey yellowy stuff Some lights. Let's get some of that green back. This is the Galleria Lights Green or Bright Green. Good shortcut to brilliant, brilliant greens with the lemon. Uh, want some light. I want that nice orangey colour, the light in there, it's coming across. Let's just blend that a little bit. It's a little bit wet. Give it a bit of a dry, I think. Headphones off. Put some relieving uh, complementary colours in there, like the red. Right, some nice, nice dots of red here. If it goes wrong, you can always just put back some 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 greens over it, as it looks a bit dodgy there. But 
Right, let's go back with that, the black now. I'll just cover some of that up. So just a bit of it shows through. I don't overdo it. I'll put a bit of shadow behind that. Or in front of it, shall I think. I can't remember his name, but this is a famous Irish painter, I think Victorian, painted with very drab colours and very blocky and really, really luscious and lovely. And one turned up on the Antiques Roadshow and they valued it at about forty to fifty thousand pounds. I think it made hundred and forty thousand. This Irish were buying back their lost art. Just okay, it's very similar to what I did the other day, but after a thousand and what 40 videos, it's quite difficult to find new subjects. I'm just recycling and seeing if I can create new things. Oh, it's just some bright on air. Just changing the shape of the landscape here. Getting that light. Okay, I can't do much more of that. So let's have a look at it in a in the cream mount. See what it looks like. <clears throat> More than summer. It's, uh... I just love mouth. It's all a frame. That's everything. At least fifty percent. Close your eyes. No peeping. Oops. Oh, don't look. Okay. Oops. Uh, you can peep now, but I'm just trying to flatten that. Now. I don't think I can write that thing. No, oh, there we are. Very little detail, just um, an impressionist abstract type of painting. But I think in the right light would look quite attractive. I've not tried to, to model anything, I just put trees in and that's about it. I don't want to put rocks in. It's a... Uh, not to say, got a hair there. Oh. We'll let that go, I think that's a bonus. All my knives have got texture on them. I'll give them a scrape with a standing knife in a minute, with a blade. Right, okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Bye bye.